Oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead, uh, from my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes, of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravocha. Paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kim vapurir ishwaraha. Sadyo hirdi avurudyate tra. Kriti bihi susu subistakshana. Completely reject all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is, uh, which is understood by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagav Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established in, within his heart. Nikama kalpaturur galitam falam sukumakad amrita dravya samyutam vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur ahoras kabuvibhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. mature fruit of the desire to your Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectar and juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantak Sto Hyabhadrani Vidu Noti Sri Hitsatam to hear, hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, or Krishna who is dwelling in everyone's heart, 
acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preso badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavu. Kama loba dayas che Chete tire in avidam Stitvam satve prasiddhati By development of devotional service one becomes, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance and thus material loss and avarice are diminished Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya chidyante chasikaramani chidyante evat manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, verse number 30. Gitam Bhagavata Jnanam Yet that sangrama more than he. Kala karma tamo rudam. Punar adyagamat prabhu. Translation Because of the Lord's pastimes and activities, and because of his absence, it appeared that Arjuna forgot the instructions left by the personality of Godhead. But factually, this was not the case. And again, he became lord of his senses. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. A conditioned, conditioned soul is enwrapped in his fruitive activities by the force of eternal time. But the Supreme Lord, when, his in, when he incarnates on the earth, is not influenced by Kala, or the material conception of past, present, and future. The activities of the Lord are eternal, and they are manifestations of his Atma Maya, or internal potency. All pastimes, or activities of the Lord, are spiritual in nature. But the layman, but to the layman, they appear to be on the same level with material activities. It also appeared that Arjuna and the Lord were engaged in a battle of Kurukshetra, as the other party was also engaged. But factually, the Lord was executing his mission of incarnation and association with his eternal friend Arjuna. Therefore, such apparently material activities of Arjuna did not drive him away from his transcendental position, but on the contrary, revived his consciousness of the songs of the Lord as he sang them personally 
This revival of consciousness is assured by the Lord in the Bhagavad Gita, 1865, as follows. One should think of the Lord always. The mind should not forget him. One should become a devotee of the Lord and offer obeisances unto him. One who lives in that fashion becomes undoubtedly endowed with the blessing of the Lord by achieving the shelter of his lotus feet. There is on nothing to doubt about this eternal truth because Arjuna was his confidential friend and the secret was disclosed to him. Arjuna had no desire to fight with his relatives, but he fought for the mission of the Lord. He was always engaged in the execution of his mission only, and therefore, after the Lord's departure, he remained in the same transcendental position, even though it appeared that he forgot all the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita. One should therefore adjust the activities of life in pace with the mission of the Lord. And by doing this, one is sure to return back home, back to Godhead. This is the highest perfection of life. Srila Prabhupada Ki So one time, Srila Prabhupada was giving a lecture in New Mayapur, which is in France. It's our, the farm uh, that's connected to the Paris temple, but it's about at least three and a half hours away from Paris. And during that lecture, he quoted this verse, Man mana bhava mad bhaktu mad yaji mam namaskuru mam evaisisi satyam te pratijane priyosime. Always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage and respect to me. If you do this, I promise you, you become dear to me and you will come back to me. So, this, the, the, the promise word is satyam te, I promise you. So, one devotee asked Prabhupada a question. He said, I've been chanting Hare Krishna for so many years, but I'm not feeling really happiness. So Prabhupada said, oh, he said, man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yajimam namaskru mami vaisyasi satyam te pratijane priyosime. He said, if you do this, then raja vidya raja guyam pavitam vidam uttamam pratyaksa bhagavan tadarmam so sukam karta matrimam. You must be happy. But the, the devotee went like this. So Prabhupada says, Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskru mami vaisisi satyam te prati jani priyosime. He said, if you do this, you must be happy. He said, and if you are not happy, it's because there is some fault in doing this. So <laughs> he repeated this mantra, this uh, verse three, four times. And uh, he pointed out that if after chanting Hare Krishna for so many years, you're still not happy, it's because there's a fault in your practice. Either you're not following all the regulative principles, or you're being negligent, or you might have committed some offenses to the holy name or to devotees. But there's a fault somewhere. That's why you're not feeling happy. But if you follow properly, then you will feel happy because Prabhupada says, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. And Krishna says, susukam kartam avyayam. This process is full of happiness. So, uh, Prabhupada, in this verse, the verse, first of all, says that uh, it appeared that Arjuna forgot the instructions left by the personality of Godhead. So, uh, what, what does he mean by that? Well, 
uh, when a uh, person uh, is Krishna conscious, they're always, it's because they're always remembering Krishna. So, uh, or and following and remembering his instructions, they follow his instructions. However, sometimes people become negligent by skipping things or not exactly doing things in the right way. And that begins, uh, then they go, go on a slippery slope going downward and they don't feel happiness. Uh, they feel frustrated. Now why does someone feel frustrated? Because they have material desires that are not satisfied. So as soon as a person wants something material or expects something material from devotional service, their unhappiness begins. Because you're not, you can never have everything you want. It's not possible. And by wanting one material thing, it leads you to want another material thing, which leads you to want another material thing. And so it's an unending series or a sequence of wants or desires. So, therefore, uh, it says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, Naso Chiti Nakangsati. When one is a liberated soul, they're completely satisfied uh, by virtue of their knowledge and realization in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, they don't need anything else. They don't need any artificial thing outside of knowledge and, and, and uh, uh, acquired knowledge and realization. And, and so, there's no more uh, sochati and kankshati. Sochati is lamentation because someone has lost something material that they were enjoying and kangsati is desiring something for their sense enjoyment so one is free of that of sochati and kangsati and samaksarve subhutesu they are equal to all living entities in other words they offer respect to all living entities because they understand that every living entity has an eternal relationship with Krishna. Every living entity is the eternal part and parcel of the of the Lord. Mamaya Mamsa Jiva Bhuta Jiva Loka Sanatanam. They are Sanata. And so with all these understandings, the devotee is prasanatma, is satisfied in the self. He doesn't need anything outside of himself. But himself includes Krishna as Paramatma, which is in the soul. <clears throat> so these are essential realizations of the devotee. And the satisfaction within the self is a very important point. And uh, this is explained also in the sixth chapter where it says that, let's see. Jnana Vigyana Triptatma Kuta Stovijitendriya Yukta Iti Uchyate Yogi Shamalostrasma Kanchana. A person is said to be established in self realization and is called a yogi or mystic when he's fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization. Such a person is situated in transcendence and is self controlled. He sees everything, whether it is pebbles, stones, or gold as the same. So, this fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization, that's the main point. And how, do you, how does that happen? It's by regularly hearing Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, and regularly reciting them, and regularly remembering them, and regularly following the instructions. So, Krishna, uh, Arjuna heard the Bhagavad Gita from Krishna directly. And it seemed like he was lamenting the absence of Krishna. Yudhisthira noticed this seeming morosity in Arjuna. But if that was a fact, if he was actually lamenting like that, 
then he would have been, uh, let's say, forgetful of Krishna's instructions. What is Krishna's instructions? Well, in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he says that a... Uh, Asochyanam uh, Vasochastram Pragnavatam Stubhase Gatasama Gatasama Nanasochantik Pandita. He says, The Supreme Personality of God has said, While speaking learned words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief. Those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. So, Arjuna was lamenting uh, before the battle of Kurukshetra. He actually had tears in his eyes. And he made an impassioned plea to the Lord that he should not fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. But Krishna didn't accept it. So as soon as Arjuna accepted Krishna as his guru, Karpanya dosapata sambhava, Pichamitram Dharma Samud Hacheta Yat Sheyasyan Nisitam Bruhitan Me Sisyaste Sisyaste Ham Sadimam Twam Prapanam. Now I am confused about my duty, that is, his Dharma, right? My duty. And have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple, and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So this is Arjuna surrendered to Krishna, even though he was bewildered, even though he was confused, even though he said no to Krishna. Still, because he's a devotee in, in, in heart, he surrendered to the Lord and asked the Lord to clear his mind of his doubts by asking questions. Whenever you have a doubt, you should ask a question submissively to the spiritual master or spiritual masters. And that's the difference between a person who is a devotee and a person who's not a devotee. A person who's a devotee will always go to a spiritual authority and express their doubts and ask for a clarification. And someone who's not a devotee, they think they know everything, they don't need anybody else's advice, especially some uh, spiritual teacher. If they want some advice, they'll take a seminar on how to become free of stress. Every speaker that comes to Microsoft is giving a seminar on how to become free. Is that right, Prabhu? <laughs> it's all called complete nonsense. Their stress is never over by those seminars, you know. And they do all these things, you know. They say, well, we'll break up into little groups and you can connect with each other, you know. That's, uh, that's their one. Yeah. And now we'll play some games where you have to, you know, cooperate with each other. And this and that. It's all nonsense. Complete nonsense. It never works, you know. After the seminar, everyone says, oh, now I know, you know, now I know. But that nothing has changed, you see. Even the devotees, they go to, they go to uh, Microsoft to give uh, lectures on how to become free from stress. Is that right? <laughs> they do the same thing, right? The, the whole thing is nonsense. Uh, you want to become free of stress? Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskru mam evaisisi satyam te prati jane priyosima. You become dear to Krishna by always thinking of him remembering him, worshiping him, becoming his devotee. Now, that's the point. Becoming his devotee, right? Uh, did they mention that in the class, in the, in the stress classes? No, they don't mention that. That's, that's the most important thing. And offering one's homage and respect to the Lord. So, <laughs> therefore, uh, Krishna told Arjuna, while speaking learning words, you are mourning for what is not worthy of grief, those who are wise lament neither for the living nor for the dead. So it looked like Arjuna had forgotten that. That's what it's saying in this verse. But factually, it was not the case. And again, he, be and again, he became lord of his senses. That's the, the blessing. That's what makes someone happy, when you can control your mind and your senses. And they act under your will 
you're not acting under their will. It's like you have control of the reins of the uh, five horses. Eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. Right. And of course, mind, intelligence, and so forth. Okay. So, this purport uh, is very important because uh, it explains how we can actually always be Krishna conscious. Prabhupada says, one should think of the Lord always. The mind should not forget him. One should become a devotee of the Lord and offer obeisances unto him. One who lives in that fashion, see, one who lives in that fashion, what is that? Thinking of the Lord, becoming a devotee of the Lord, remembering the Lord's instructions, following the Lord's instructions, offering obeisances to the Lord, surrendering to the Lord, you know, all these things, is living in that fashion. Such a person undoubtedly becomes undoubtedly endowed with the blessing of the Lord. So sometimes people come up to me and say, please give me your blessings. Well, you really want the blessings. Here's the way. Man mana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji mam namaskuru mam evaisisi satyam te pratijane priyosime. Become dear to the Lord by doing these things. Man mana, always thinking of the Lord. Mad bhakto, becoming his devotee and remaining his devotee. Mad bhakto, mad yaji, worshipping the Lord. And you worship the Lord by serving the deities, you worship the Lord by serving the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam by listening to them and engaging proactively in that listening. It's not simply listening in one ear and out the other, but listening and uh, clicking with realizations and also uh, whenever there's a doubt, asking significant questions. So, uh, one should live in that fashion and undoubtedly they're endowed with the blessing of the Lord by achieving the shelter of his lotus feet. Always remembering the Lord means you're getting taking shelter, ashraya, at his lotus feet by always remembering the Lord. There is nothing to doubt about this eternal truth because Arjuna was his confidential friend. The secret was disclosed to him. Ah, yeah, that's why it says, Raja Vidya Raja Guyam. Guya means the greatest secret, and this is the greatest knowledge. Pavitram idam uttamam. It's completely pure, and it's uh, above all ignorance and all darkness. Pratyakshivagamam dharmam. It gives direct perception of who you are in relationship with Krishna, and what is your duty in life. It's to serve Krishna through devotion, with devotion, not simply mechanically, but with devotion and love. Susakam kartam aviyam, and it's full of happiness and bliss. Therefore, Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Arjuna had no desire, so therefore the secret would be disclosed to us by uh, not doubting the eternal truth of Bhagavad Gita as spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. Arjuna had no desire to fight with his relatives, but he fought for the mission of the Lord. He was always engaged in the execution of the Lord's mission only. And therefore, after the Lord's departure, he remained in the same transcendental position, even though it appeared that he forgot all the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita. One should therefore adjust the activities of life in pace with the mission of the Lord. What is the mission of the Lord? Every town and village, this holy name of the Lord should be heard by all living entities. So that's the mission of the Lord in Kali Yuga, to spread the Sankirtan movement. Just like Nri Hari, he's going with the food truck, he sets up a carpet and a little altar, and he has Bhagavad Gita, and he has his harmonium, and there's cartels. We're going to add more things to 
uh, we're gonna get some shakers and instruments and a whole bunch of things. Uh, so uh, people get prasadam and they also sit down if they want. They're not nobody's forcing them, and they can chant along Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and they can uh, they can hear Bhagavad Gita and ask questions and get answers. So it's very enticing. It's not. It's there's nothing aggressive about it. It's it's soft. It's gentle. Even the uh, one of the directors of the uh, uh, University Heights Community Center, he wrote a letter, an email to to Don, and he said, "Oh, I came the other day, and I saw the food truck, and there were a lot of people there, and there was one man who was sitting on the on the uh, grass, and he was uh, chanting, and it was a very nice atmosphere." <laughs> he said, "Did you see that email?" Yeah, he said, "It's a very nice atmosphere. It was very nice." He said. <laughs> Doesn't matter you were chanting Hare Krishna, but the atmosphere was nice. The whole scene was nice. People having food, and someone is chanting, and some people was chanting with you. And he saw that, and so it was very nice. So this is uh, adjusting the activities of life in pace with the mission of the Lord. And by doing this, one is sure to return back to home, back to Godhead. This is the highest perfection of life. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Yes. There's more information about it here. Well, this one verse, sixth chapter, eighth verse, talks about. Uh, tripta atma. Tripta atma means satisfied. Tripta atma, satisfaction of the soul, right? But there's more information about that. Let's see where it is here. Yeah. In the fifth chapter, verse number twenty-four and twenty-five. Number 23, it says, uh, starting with 22, it says, these are all beautiful verses. Yehi samspar sajabo ga dukha yonaya evacha adi antavanta konteya na tesu ramante buddha. It says, an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses, O son of Kunti. Such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Yeah, because he wants pleasure that has no beginning and has no end. But all these material pleasures, based on sense gratification, have a beginning and an end, right? So, then the next verse, Sak no tihayivaya sudum prak sarira vimokshanat kamakroda bhavan before giving up this present body, if one is able to tolerate the urges of the material senses and check the force of desire and anger, he is well situated and is happy in this world. So that's another aspect, right? Then, yo nata suko natar aramas tatantar jyotir evaya Sayogi Brahma Nirvanam Brahma Bhuto Adigachati. One whose happiness is within, who is active and rejoices within, and whose aim is inward, is actually the perfect mystic. He is liberated in the Supreme and ultimately attains the Supreme. So, what is this happiness within? It's discovering that God is present in your heart, He's your best friend and best wisher. And he's closer to you than anyone else. There's no such, no question of, oh, I feel lonely. Uh, nobody likes me. I don't have any friends. Your best friend is right there in your heart. Instead of looking outside for your best friend, you should look inside. See, people are looking for happiness outside. So they go to Disneyland and they go to Las Vegas, and they go to Yosemite Park, and they go here and they go there. And it doesn't solve their problem. They just 
it's just like when you have a boil on your hand, you know, and it's, it's burning and itching and, and painful. And you go like this. And you get a little bit of relief. But it doesn't change anything. <laughs> so Yosemite and Disney World, uh, I mean, one, one family took their kid to Disney World and they, they, they put the kid on all the different rides, you know, and then it was starting to get dark and they said, well, it's time to go home now. And the kid threw a tantrum and started screaming, I don't want to go home. I want to go on another ride. I want to go. And he started screaming and crying and he was upset and completely in distress. You see? <laughs> so, you know, it's like blowing on the boil. It's, it doesn't solve any problem at all. See? So it only makes it worse. And then it says, and this is, this is the clincher. Um, uh, no, not the clincher. There's two more verses. Labante Brahma Nirvana Rishaya Sina Kalmasa China Dvayada Yatat Mana Sarva Bhuta Hiterataha. Those are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts. See, dualities rise from, uh, arise from doubts. You have a doubt. Oh, what's going to happen if Trump is elected again? Oh, Microsoft merged with Facebook. Oh, my God, what's going to happen to my job? You know, oh, this, oh, that, oh, I got a fever. Maybe I have corona. Oh, uh, my God, my kids got the sniffles. You know, I, I'm not going to send them to school. I'm going to keep them at home. And, you know, and, oh, every, everything, anytime there's a doubt, there's duality. You know, should I do this or should I do that? Right? So, those who are beyond the dualities that arise from doubts, whose minds are engaged within who are always busy working for the welfare of all living ent beings and who are free from all sins, achieve liberation in the Supreme. This should be our verse. We should focus on this verse. Fifth chapter, 25th verse. And then the next verse, Kamakroda vimuktanam yatinam yatachetasam abhito brahma nirvanam vartate viditatmanam those who are free from anger and all material desires, who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. So, here's the explanation. This is why people are not happy, because they're looking for happiness outside, and so they're looking inside. And you look inside, you see, eventually, or you become convinced eventually that Krishna is in your heart as the witness. So if he's seeing everything you do and hearing everything you say and, and knowing everything you're thinking, then you can't get away with anything. Therefore, you have to be careful. Just like one time I was driving in a car with a father and his daughter was in the back seat. And we were talking, this thing, that thing. And all of a sudden, I looked back to the daughter and I said, how would you feel if your dad was with you all the time at school, in your bedroom, uh, when you're talking on, uh, with a friend on the internet? She said, ooh, that would be weird. <laughs> well, yeah, it's weird because Daddy or mommy is there hearing everything you say and everything you do. But wait a minute. Big Daddy is there. Big Daddy, Krishna is in the heart hearing everything you say, everything you desire, everything you do, you see. So unless we come to realization of Big Daddy, Super Soul, Krishna in the heart, we're not civilized. We will do goofy things or even sinful things, thinking that we can get away with it because there's no witness. Of course, there's always a witness. So this is called Krishna consciousness. That's why it says here <clears throat> that, uh, yeah. Yeah, it says, Man manabhava, mad bhaktu, mad yajimanaskru. We have to become conscious 
of Krishna. We have to become conscious of his presence always, that he is upadas chana mantra cha bhakta bhakta maheshwara paramat meti chapi ukte dehe smin purushak para. There's a very important verse, 1322, that says, uh, 23. Yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul, or more colloquially said, Big Daddy. So, if we become conscious of super soul, we become a real person, and we become careful of everything we do, and our doubts are eliminated, we're no longer troubled by duality, which is the cause of stress, and we become happy within. And nothing can disturb that happiness within. Happiness without can be disturbed, but the happiness within cannot be disturbed. Sila Prabhupada ki jay. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Yes. Yes. Big Daddy. <laughs> oh, or or so, Bara Pitaji. Yeah. Bara Pitaji. It's just story. There was one teacher. <laughs> I mean, a spiritual teacher, obviously. And um, he had two students. So start all over again. <laughs> start all over again. And uh, one day he wanted to test his students. He gave them uh, apples, you know apple to each yeah. one. And so you take this apple and you go and then you eat in a secluded place. Make sure nobody sees you. Right. <laughs> Just make sure you're in a secluded place and nobody sees you. And then and then then later on you come tell me. So the all the students they went there and then some they they, they hid somewhere and in the private room, something, or nobody sees me, and they eat the apple. But one of those students, he, did, he couldn't eat his apple, and then he came back, and then he told his teacher, teacher said, why did you eat? Everybody else ate. Why did you eat your apple? He said, he said Master, there's, every, I, I, there's the presence of God everywhere, so there's nowhere that could hide, you know? <laughs> So basically, that's being Christian conscious to know that God is everywhere. Yes, we're never alone. You know, so that's your story. So the nice story. That yeah, that's the student was very Christian conscious mm -hmm. out of all the other students. And then uh, second thing, Maharaj, the point you're making about because the verse is about the mission of the Lord. The mission of Lord Krishna was yada yada idarmasha paritra paritraena That was the mission. Of of Lord Krishna in the battlefield of Kukchetra. And then our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Pitivite Yashe Yatana Gajikram. So this, like you mentioned about this uh, going out, you know, outdoor preaching, you said to add a few things, but we want to add more people. That means <laughs> some families, some devotees or con con congregation, they should sometimes drive over, spend even half an hour singing Hare Krishna, sitting there. That's what we did in New York. Most people used to come in the beginning, just the devotees after work, because we do in the evening, six to eight. So as people can, after work, they can drive there and then spend maybe 15, half an hour, 10 minutes. The trouble is the COVID. Well, if you have that's a big uh, canopy. That's the thing, you know, because, uh, you know, we, People were asking Namurata, can we go on Sankatan? So if you go on Sankatan, oh, okay. then you have to quarantine when you come back. Oh. <laughs> so, I think uh, if you we, have a we, big canopy, we, and then we, uh, we well, we'll do it. We'll do it again. It's just that uh, you know, it's just that it's this thing. You know, all all you need is one person to get sick, and then everyone would blame us, right? Oh, I see. Because well, we brought it back from the outside. So you have to be very careful. The more devotees go and sit down outside with the others, the more possibility there is that 
You know, if only one person goes, then you know, if you bring the COVID back, we know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that to happen. I, we don't, you know, it's not that we want that to happen. We don't want it to happen. But there's less possibility. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's a part of. Strategy. But as soon as it's over, yes, we'll do it. Yeah, I've been nice to sit down with like many of us. And this is where the, everybody can participate. Yes. And even, even just for 10 minutes, you know, like a family can come to the kid to sit down for a few minutes. It's a good well, way. Well, we were doing that before, Prabhu. Don't think we were not doing that. We were doing that before. Oh, no, no, I know, but I'm yeah. saying like now. But now you explain it, I understand. Yeah. That because of the situation. Yeah. Uh, we can't do that, but it would be nice. Yeah. I was excited to say that, but then yeah. I didn't realize about the, 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 the situation. Okay, thank and you very much. Want, uh, man, yeah. This is out of uh, the subject today, but from yesterday we didn't finish. It's the only time we can discuss about it. Yeah, yeah, sure. When we just yesterday mentioned about second enjoyer. Yes. Okay. Well, I understand that the Shasta says, uh, that the Supreme Lord is the enjoyer, is a bhokta. That's a, the, the Sanskrit word of enjoyer, yeah. is a bhokta. And the devotee is bogya. Bogya means enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you fit in being uh, the term enjoyed, a devotee being enjoyed, and being second enjoyer? Mm -hmm. Because there's enjoyer and enjoyed. How can you explain that? Well, you offer food to the Lord, mm -hmm. and he offers it back to you as his prashad. Mm -hmm. And it says, when the spiritual master sees that the devotees are eating Bhagavad prashada, he becomes satisfied. Mm -hmm. So, the same with the Lord. When he sees that you're respecting prashadam, he's satisfied, and you are satisfied. You don't feel any satisfaction or happiness when you eat prashadam? Well, I think, it, this way I understand, according to terms of enjoyer and enjoyed, that is not actually me enjoying, the Supreme Lord enjoying. Yeah, but you're also enjoying. Mm. You're also enjoying. And, and uh, okay, here's the example. Not the example, here's a quote. One second. Uh, one second. Well, when it says susakam kartam aveyam, mm -hmm. you feel happiness. Right. Isn't that enjoying? That because the Supreme Lord is happy. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you, but you're the secondary enjoyer. So if, if there was no enjoyment, mm -hmm. there's no question of a secondary enjoyment, enjoyment okay. or enjoyer. But you are actually experiencing happiness in connection with the Lord. Mm -hmm by receiving his prashad in, the po in different mm -hmm. ways. Like, for example, Arjuna says, Nasta moha smritir labhva tat prashadat mayuchita. He says, now my illusion is gone, and I'm situated in my right position as your eternal servant. This is your best prashad. Mm -hmm. Tat prashadat mayuchita. He says, my illusion is now gone. I've gained my memory by your mercy. So th this receiving the mercy of the Lord is the greatest prashad, <laughs> you see. And, uh, and it's not only in the form of, of uh, sanctified food. It's in the form of getting rid of all doubts, uh, being situated in devotional service, and also receiving prashadam. So there's a, there's a verse here. Okay, uh, there's a purport here. Let me just find it uh, in the seventh chapter where Prabhupada explains the difference between the Mayavadis and the devotees. So, the Mayavadis are engaged in, uh, oftentimes, tapasya. So therefore, they, they eat very, uh, let's say, plain food and but the devotees, they offer the best food to Krishna, and Krishna offers it back to them, and they, they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to take me a minute to find this. Right. Anyway, there is a definitely a, this purport, and I'll, I'll find it in a minute. It just takes a little while. Um, but anyway, it's, it's, Prabhupada is explaining the difference between the Mayavadis and the devotees. Mm -hmm. so anyway, let me find it, and we'll end there. Thank you. Jay.